Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning platform. My name is O.K. Buno, your mathematics tutor. And the subject, of course, is mathematics. And the topic we're considering, or we will be considering right now, is logarithm. Logarithm of numbers. What do we mean when we say logarithm? We'll find out in a short while. Of course, under this topic, logarithm, we will also look at the subtitles, the use of tables, the logarithm of numbers greater than one, the logarithm of numbers less than one. Uh, we'll look at multiplication and division of logarithm. We'll look at powers and roots. Now, logarithm. Logarithm. Um, you would be wondering why, what's this logarithm thing all about? Logarithm was a very useful invention of the 17th century to help in calculating figures that involved uh, large numbers, very large numbers. Of course, when the logarithm table was invented in the 17th century, there was no calculator. Or perhaps the calculators were quite crude. They could not really do the calculations uh, that were required for large numbers. So logarithm table was very much in vogue as at then. Yes, the logarithm table may not be very useful now, but you need to know how to use it, okay? A lot of us press the calculators to do our calculations, but there was a time when calculators were not there. And logarithm tables were what served the day. Logarithm simply can be defined as that exponent, that power, Okay, to which a certain base can be raised mm, to give a certain number or to result in a certain number. Once again, logarithm is that exponent or that power to which a certain base can be raised to yield a certain number. Mm? So let us say the logarithm of a number uh, x, or rather the logarithm of a number n. Now logarithm, let's use x to represent that logarithm, okay, of a number x, of a number n, okay, is that exponent to which a certain base can be raised to yield this number n. Okay, so we have three, in, in the definition of logarithm, we have three major factors that come to play. Okay, that is the logarithm, okay, to which this base can be raised to give rise to this number n. Simply put, we write it this way, okay? The logarithm, sorry, uh, excuse me. So, logarithm, okay, we have uh, the base being raised to a certain power or exponent, okay, to give us the number n. So what is that exponent of power to which b can be raised to give us n? That exponent of power is the logarithm. Okay, so we say the log of x, okay, and the base of b is equal to n. 
So logarithm of x to the base of b equals n. The, that's as the definition is as simple as that. Now we have the definition of logarithm. Uh, however, we will begin this uh, class with the use of tables, that is logarithm tables. You all at this point should have acquired your four figure tables. So let's see how the four figure tables can be used. Now in using your four figure tables, okay, uh, basically we uh, will be dealing with logarithms in the base of 10 okay um, and that's what we call the common logarithm common logarithm two things must be on your mind when you use the common logarithms okay uh, when you use your tables to figure out your common logarithms and those two things are one characteristic Charac the characteristic of the logarithm two the mantissa of the logarithm first of all what do we mean by characteristic of the logarithm characteristic of the logarithm is the number that must be written before the logarithm the, is, is the number that must be written before the logarithm itself as may be derived from your four figure table now let me explain what i mean the characteristic of any logarithm is a number okay that is one number less i will demonstrate it don't worry okay the characteristic of any logarithm is the number okay that is 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 a is a is a figure or rather a a digit or okay let's say number that is one digit less than the entire figure okay of the logarithm itself now this is what i mean if you are to look for the logarithm of this number for instance two three four five now how many digits do we have here one two three four the characteristic of this logarithm is since we have four digits the characteristic would be what three if you have the number Two, three, four. What would be the characteristic of this logarithm? The characteristic is two. If you have two, three, what would be the characteristic? The characteristic would be what? One. So the characteristic of any logarithm is a particular number, okay, that is one digit less than the entire number of digits in that logarithm or in the whole number part of that logarithm so if i have point one two three here it doesn't matter the characteristic will still be what three because the whole number part of the, of the logarithm is what the characteristic deals with so if I have one two three here it still doesn't matter our char characteristic will still be what two and if I have here one 
two, three. The same thing, our characteristic will still remain one because we are concerned not with the decimal, uh, uh, with the decimal fraction part or the, uh, the fraction part. No, we are not. We are concerned with the whole number part. Okay? So now, that is the characteristic of a logarithm. We will very soon know how to use these characteristics. The next thing is the mantissa. What is the mantissa of a logarithm? We have just said, okay, that the characteristic deals with the whole number part of the logarithm, as we have seen here. The mantissa part deals with the entire logarithm itself, the entire figure, okay, both including the decimal part, both this and also the decimal part. Now, this is what we mean. The mantissa of the logarithm can change. Okay? The mantissa of the logarithm can't change, okay, but the characteristic can change because the characteristic of the logarithm deals only with the whole number part, while the mantissa deals with the entire number of the logarithm. Now, when we multiply this number, for instance, by 10, you will agree with me that the characteristic, okay, if we multiply this by 10, you'll agree with me that the, the decimal point will shift one place to the right. Hmm? because we have multiplied by 10. Now, the mantissa, which is all of this, does not change. However, the characteristic will change because now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So we see 5 digits. So the characteristic will be what will become four is that not however the mantissa will still remain the same now we will demonstrate shortly what we mean by this good so having understood the two concepts of characteristic and mantissa now, let us demonstrate further for better understanding. Let us consider this number. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Now, the characteristic of this number is what? The characteristic of this number is 3. I hope I heard you right. 3. Now, what is the mantissa of this very number? The mantissa is calculated like this. You take your four-figure table. Okay. Good. So, let us quickly demonstrate it. You take your four-figure table, you have your logarithms here, then you have certain numbers, okay, from zero down to nine, okay? You have them from zero to nine. Then you have another table again, okay? Now that one is called the differences. The differences. You have the differences from one to nine okay this one is from zero okay to nine and of course you have your logarithms the numbers are listed down here now you go to 24 okay logarithm 24 under six okay let's assume six is here so you trace down to six. 
the first thing you have written is the characteristic, which is what? Three. Now you look for 24 under 6 difference 8. So 24 under 6. In my own table here, okay, you can work with me as we do that together. 24 under 6 is what? 3909. Okay. Says 3909. Now, difference 8. Difference 8 is what? Difference 8 is 14. Okay. So... Of course, you add 14 to this number. Now, we add 14 to this very number, which is a, which we got under 8 as 3909. And if we do that, we we'll have, uh, of course, this becomes 3, this becomes 2, and then 93.5. Three. So, we have resolved this logarithm to become what? 3.3923. And this is the logarithm of the number 2468. Good. So, we have been able to resolve this. And uh, let me just quickly remind you that a knowledge of standard form can actually help. Do you know that if you were to write this number in standard form, for instance, it would look like this. 2.468 times 10 raised to the power of 3. Is that not... That is because you have moved this point three decimal places to the left. Mm -hmm. One, two, three decimal places to the left. So you have times 10 raised to the power of three. Okay, so the knowledge of standard form would also be relevant in helping you, okay, get your characteristic of any number. Okay, is that clear? So you see this three here is still the three you have here now we have been able to resolve the logarithm of this now like i said if we multiply or divide a certain number by 10 the characteristic will change but the but the mantissa will remain the same okay now let's demonstrate that let us demonstrate that and may I also tell you that as long as the mantissa remains the same, you still have the logarithm to be the same. However, when I mean the logarithm, I mean this part, okay, that has the, the decimal fraction part. Now, let us look for, for instance, for the logarithm, okay, Resolve the log of 24.68. You can see that the digits are still the same. However, the number has changed because it's now 24.68. So in this case, what will be our what will be our characteristic here? A characteristic here will be what? 1. 2 minus 1, which is 1. So our characteristic is what? 1. Then you put point. Now the mantissa, okay, or the, the, the entire number itself, how do you get the logarithm? We want to resolve this logarithm. Like I explained earlier, the mantissa does not change okay so 
if we are going to get the mantissa of this logarithm, we will simply do follow the same process as we did in this first one. However, the characteristic has changed because we have the whole number as 24, that is two digits. So the characteristic will become one, which is what we have written. Now, the mantissa uh, part of the logarithm, okay, which we will derive by the same method which we have used to derive this, is what? 24 under 6, which will give us 39, okay, 3909 plus difference 8, which is 14, plus 14. So we still have, remember, you're adding the mantissa part. You have nothing to do with the characteristic. Okay, you're adding the mantissa. Now, that gives us what? 1.39, okay, 2, 3. Now, that's how we get the mantissa. Has it changed? No. Like I said, you get the mantissa part of your logarithm from this entire number while you get the characteristic part of your logarithm as i said earlier from the whole number part you get the mantissa part of your logarithm from this entire number while you get the characteristic of your logarithm from only the whole number part is that clear so now the characteristic is what one and the mantissa is what 3.9 or 0.3923. Good.